All rise in order. 430 30 quarter down session. Honorable Dave Walter presiding. Everybody be seated. Thank you. Morning. Morning. Afternoon. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, one of which has been brought uh, by my client, CSI. Um, and if I can give you a little bit of background. Is reference to which deponent? Uh, with respect to Tom Davis. And there's also a motion to quash with regard to the deposition of Leo Romani. And uh, also with respect to uh, the Riverside Sheriff's Department. So who filed the name regarding the Leah and all that stuff? Um, that was filed by by CSI. Uh, in the third motion, we filed the third motion, Your Honor, Monty Drake's counsel. In addition, Your Honor, I, I sent a letter to the plaintiff's counsel that I'm in trial next week as to the first two that was one of those notices. I didn't file a motion, but I just added on to the existing motion that was filed. And Mr. Drake is seeking a quash deposition of him. Mr. Drake is uh, seeking a move deposition of Riverside County. Sheriff's Department, so we only go to California once. Okay, well, who wants to start doing you know, background, I guess? If I may, Your Honor. Um, if you recall, back in September, we were here on a temporary injunction hearing, a special appearance hearing, a motion to continue the special Apparently reached the, at the time of that agreement. Who was it that you were wanting to propose? Your Honor, um, the, the background discussion so far has been a little bit vague. If you'll recall, what the issue was at the time was whether or not we could take the deposition of David Miscavige, who is a name party and a head person in the church. 
the court indicated you were going to uh, that you would set a hearing for the 18th. See if there was some lesser. And you wanted to know could we do some? Could we obtain from them some discovery short of David Miscavige and then come back if there was additional needed? That's all that that was about. That was not about third party discovery, us gathering declarations or affidavits from third parties or deposing third parties, et cetera. It was just what could we get incrementally from them? So, um, by way of agreement, so I was just. So the agreement what was to. What were you requesting beyond what could be agreed? Right. So, so what we were requesting from them was, and it, we thought it was a reasonable compromise, a representative of CSI, a representative of RTC, and they said that the two private investigators were willing to give their depositions. We said, great. Plus, they would um, produce documents. And uh, so we got that lined up. In addition, we got addresses, et cetera, about third party discovery. And we then sent notices for the deposition of Tommy Davis, who lives in Austin now, and uh, was the former spokesperson for the church. He was sent by the church to Texas for uh, various assignments that's relevant to the special appearance. We served him with a subpoena and not noticed the depositions at about the same time because we were quite confident that if we discussed this with them in advance, Tommy Davis would um, go off on a trip to Tahiti or somewhere and we would never get him subpoenaed. <coughs> uh, he's not a friendly witness. <coughs> in addition, uh, we checked about uh, taking the deposition of Lita Remini uh, out in California, and I'm not quite sure what the complaint was about the going out on two trips to California. We set Leah Remini one day, and the very next day, the Riverside County, California Sheriff's Department. They're both in Southern California, so we thought we would do Monday, Austin, we get on a plane, go to Los Angeles for Tuesday and Wednesday. And all of this is being driven by the fact that there's a hearing on the 18th we're trying to get ready for that and uh, so th there's a little bit of time pressure that comes into play from from having that short deadline we discussed uh, yeah, I, I, I was attempting to you said yeah, it, I, I left you, you answered my question oh, so the, the simple question we had many many conversations setting up four depositions of the Thursday and Friday and not once did he say I want other depositions day after we reach the agreement, get it set, get everything agreed to, he drops these three additional depositions the week of the hearing in California without calling us. And Judge, I will tell you right now, I'm in jury trial in the 225th Judicial District Court, Judge Sakai's court, right now in the middle of a three-week trial. We've got another week to go. We're going to be cutting and tie our teeth to be out of that trial before the 18th. And not one phone call to us that, that hey, I'm going to notice some depositions. I think you're supposed to confer before you any type of discovery. Uh, we did call them in filing the motion to quash and try and work something out with them. As a part of our obligation to confer, we weren't able to reach an agreement. But we're here, and I'm representing you to the court. I'm in trial right now. My partner, Ricardo Cedillo, is in trial. I've left the trial. The main witness on the other side, represented by Mr. Capuccio, is, is on the stand right now. Uh, and, and I'm out of trial because I thought I needed to come and address counsel's lack of, of civility and following the rules to call and ask us if these days were fine. If he wants to cram in and he, he thinks he needs three additional witnesses on the week of the special appearance hearing, which was odd because much of the discussion about when these original four that we all agreed to was going to happen, he needed it seven days before the hearing. And that was the reason why we had so much trouble fitting those four depositions in so he would have time to use that evidence for the special appearance hearing. But then without calling us, he drops three more depositions, two of which are in California. And he tells me, when I talk to him... The dates oh, for those three depositions are what? 
for next week, 14th, 15th, and 16th, and the hearing is on the 18th. Okay, so Davis is like 14. Yes, yes, sir. Leah Remini is the 15th, and Riverside Sheriff is the 16th. And Mr. Jeffrey told me that he, I, as of yesterday or the day before, he doesn't have Ms. Remini even served with the subpoena. So I, I don't even know what goes there. But <laughs> I'll be glad to answer that. You know, if, if I may, I represent RTC. They did not file the motion to quash. CSI filed the motion to quash. As the court will recall, it was the RTC and Mr. Stavage's position that no discovery was warranted in the case. We, when we were served with these additional notices, deposition notices, we had to make a call, a decision about whether to approach the court and, and contest the depositions at all. We decided not to do that. We're not contesting, they, they, they say that they need these depositions. We don't think that the depositions are relevant to the special appearance. Uh, we don't think they ought to go forward, but it's not worth it to trouble the court. If he thinks that that's what they need and they're going to yield something uh, productive, then let them do it. But the problem is a timing problem. If they're going to take these depositions, 14, 15, 16, and we're going to have a hearing on the 18th, the results of these depositions, number one, any results aren't going to be, we're not going to have them in time to prepare any kind of rebuttal for the, the hearing on the 18th. So I conferred with Mr. Jeffrey, and, and we talked about moving the hearing. We, we, we spoke with Savannah, we got dates. I thought we were pretty close to an agreement. I understand his concern. His concern is Mr. Mr. Davis was served with the subpoena. And he thinks that the church, someone on this side of the room, is in charge of Mr. Davis. Well, that's 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 not the case. But in any event, and then there's certainly no evidence to support that that's the case. The problem is the 18th hearing and we talked about moving it to December 13th, which would give him plenty of time to both serve Mr. Davis if he wanted to and get whatever third party uh, discovery he thinks is necessary. Deposition, besides what was agreed to, were contemplated or did you need at the time? And certainly by now, I can't imagine, I mean, I don't know what else we would come up with. So we just need to figure out what depositions we need to get them scheduled. I know it's going to be difficult, but it should be limited to the jurisdictional issue. And let's just not compound the issue further at the point. And if I may add, just as by example, I mean, <clears throat> You choose to sue a number of defendants, you need to work with all their counsel. I was in pre-trial yesterday in Galveston. I'm going to trial Monday in Judge Nee's court in Galveston for a week. I think I'll be out by late Thursday. But when I got the notices, that's why I sent a letter back to them and just said, hey, nobody called me and I can't do depots next week. I'm going to trial. So that that's the kind of difficulty with doing things without even attempting to confer. See, I've had this trial setting for six months. And, and the, the only associate I have who can cover this is one with me. She's helping me try the case. I, I'm getting a lot of slings and arrows out here, Judge. I would just like to respond, and I think there's a reasonable solution to all of this uh, that we had virtually worked out, and then they threw me a curveball uh, this morning. First of all, uh, they have many lawyers on the other side, and they have the ability on every matter of scheduling, by the way, I think they're all getting paid by the one church defendant or another. They all have the ability to say, I'm not available that day. I mean, they have a, they I'm have a, aware of that. yeah, so that's, that's one issue. Another thing is we had a deal or, or close to a deal of why don't we just move the special appearance back to December 13. That gives plenty of time for uh, this, whatever discovery needs to be done, or if we need to come here and have you rule on something, uh, we can do that. And we were fine with that. But I hate getting in front of a court and saying, well, this lawyer told me this and that lawyer told me that. I think it's unseemly. But I do need to point out that Mr. Strieber, and maybe he was speaking out of school or something like that, he told me, we can produce Tommy Davis. 
I said, well, if, as long as I don't have to worry about subpoenaing that guy again because he will hide the next time, uh, then I don't think there's any problem. Then Mr. Jefferson calls me this morning and says, uh, well, he's been gone from the church for two years. It's our position. We don't have any control over him. So at that point, I sent them an, an email and I said, I cannot make a deal with y'all if you can't agree among yourselves. So the one issue that we have is this Tommy Davis deposition. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get him served with a subpoena. It was hard to get him served uh, on sort of a surprise attack basis this time. Uh, but we did get him served. So I think the answer to this judge, although it's their motion, it's not it. We may be coming back for a motion to continue the special appearance hearing anyway if we need additional discovery, is as long as they're okay with it, move the special appearance to December 13. They want a protective order in place, uh, similar to the Western District Protective Order. We were looking at that a while ago. We're probably fine with that. We might ask the court for, for one refinement or another. And uh, because they told me they don't want to do any depositions or give us any documents unless there's a protective order in place so they could designate things as, as confidential. So that's where we stand. I don't think it should be that big of a deal, but it is very hard right now to get all of these depositions done by a week from Friday. And uh, that's, we're just dealing with the, with the courts hearing that was set, and if we're going forward on the 18th, we want to be ready. Well, I certainly would want to consolidate anything in California as best possible. <clears throat> Just one small point. I was actually surprised this morning when I got an email and filed it. It hadn't worked out, the, the, the discussions. And there's a fine but important part, point with regard uh, to Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis worked for an entity called Colonial Capital. He, he, he's, he worked for a company that spent, I think, half of his time in California. Uh, for two, two weeks a month. Yeah. There's insinuation that my client's going to send him off somewhere. That's bogus. He just doesn't work for us, and it's the classic issue that we haven't discovered all the time. He's a third party witness, and we don't, we don't control him. I can't tell counsel I'm going to have this gentleman on a specific date. We, have to, we haven't talked to the man, we haven't talked about his schedule. You served him at home. Uh, if, if there's a service issue, I don't know what the problem is. If we have to send the date for the special appearance out to December, and <coughs> that costs you have to reserve the subpoena. It doesn't pick up require reservice if we, is there not a way to uh, extend, extend the current? In other words, if he is required to show up on the 14th, then just at that show up, so to speak, there's an order or additional subpoena or whatever. Here, here's what I can do. There's a, there should be a solution to that such that. I just have to be careful that I, I am going to cooperate on behalf of the CSI and I know Lamont will on behalf of his clients uh, to do anything to make any scheduling work and not be standing here in front of you on the server. But I can agree on behalf of CSI to work with Mr. Jeffrey on dates that work, but I can't commit to him a date, nor can I. I can agree on behalf of CSI that that subpoena is extended, but I don't think that affects Mr. Davis at all. And that he's a third party, and I don't know if he has his own okay. lawyer. Now, my point, though, is to, if he's we leave it in place for the date. If he served with another one there, if it takes that kind of service for <coughs> if there's just an order of the court, just much like if you've got a witness in a trial, they're subpoenaed to a certain date for whatever they, usually that date is the first day of trial. Even though they don't testify that first day of trial, they still are under the subpoena. Right. I, 
I'm going to plead ignorance on the effect of a deposition. I don't know if that would work or not. I, I'm not saying it doesn't. Um, well, we could work between now and the 14th to come up with an alternate day. And I, I, just, I don't know if you were just speaking for yourself in your law firm, but certainly someone from the defendants has been in touch with Tommy Davis, because in your motion to quash, you had things about how he was served with the process and everything. If, if, he could just, if we could just get an alternate date, he does have an obligation to appear on the 14th. We could simply have a process server there. He, he has an obligation to appear, and if we could work out a date before then, he could be served with, with a subpoena at that time. We don't want to inconvenience him if he goes to California part of the time, but, but we, we need a date certain for the special appearance hearing, and then we need to get these things scheduled between. Uh, and how did we arrive at the first meeting? Uh, Savannah told us, are you talking about December 13th, Your Honor? She said that the optimum is a, a, a non-jury week on a Friday. And uh, so that's, she suggested no, or, or I don't know, Lamont had the communication. Uh, Mr. Jefferson. But no, I thought that she, she knows two days spot. One was, I think, November 15th, if that's a Friday, and then December 13th. Uh, as, as possibilities. She also gave us the Fridays in between, uh, but uh, we, or at least I had conflicts on those days. Well, and I've subsequently just talked with her. I think we, we could relatively easily reset certain matters that we may have on either the 10th, 11th, or 16th, or 17th. Uh, just that time of year, I prefer to not have something that's potentially protracted set on a Friday. Okay. Okay. 10th or 11th, 16th or 17th of December? Kind of more, more midweek. Sure. Just didn't know what y'all schedules, if y'all want to talk about that a minute. Okay. Can I ask you a little clarification? Um, I'm trying to avoid us not having to go to California next week. And I'm not sure I'm completely understanding. And, and I'll add to what Mr. Jeffrey said. We knew about the subpoena because Mr. Davis called somebody in our organization and said, I've been served with the subpoena. That's been the extent of the conversation. I can represent to Mr. Jeffrey and to the court. We can reach out and talk to him. But what I don't want to do is leave the courtroom today with that 14th in place. I mean, I am in trial, and I don't know that it's going to I know it's not going to be over on the 14th. And my partner, who's really the lead counsel on this case. What I'm just simply saying is, while well, his deposition is not likely to occur on the 14th, he's not relieved of the subpoena. <coughs> my point is just to, I don't want to start playing the game of having to research, hide the ball. No, we're not, and I'm not, not saying anybody's doing it, but. It, and I will represent to the court that that is not going to happen. But for purposes of the day, if I think I hear the court telling us that the effect of that subpoena is being extended by the court beyond the 14th Good days so that we can work out. Everybody's schedules can be handled. It so not, wouldn't be quashed, but just hopefully either today or we, obviously if he wants to get counsel and run in here and say that he's not got that date available, I can't stop that. Could could we get a ruling from the court that the miss tell me how you pronounce her name? Okay, name? Leah Remini, and that was raised that we didn't have her served with a subpoena yet. Well, we didn't want to bother her uh, with a subpoena. We have the subpoena ready in California to be served on her, but we didn't know what was going to happen at the hearing today. So they're on standby until we call them. So that's why we have not served her with a subpoena. But that date was already cleared. So we don't mind rescheduling any of these depositions, Your Honor. But with the 18th, we did have a problem. Uh, okay, well, then it sounds to me like the first to start of work on. I'm just trying to get it as late as possible, and that's why I worked with Savannah to get like 10th, 11th, 16th, or 17th, and that way it would be more midweek. I'm confident that we can all agree on one of those four days. I don't know that that would be a problem. Um, we're, we're good with the dates, yeah. 
So then any deposition would be scheduled before the third. I mean, if that way we don't have a seven day problem. Yeah. Right. If y'all end up choosing the 10th. That should give us ample time. Now, we're sitting here talking about the four depositions that we originally agreed to, and now there's three others that in our conversation yesterday, you still weren't 100% sure that you'd made the decision that you need those, but, and we we're gonna talk about whether that was actually the case. With Ms. regard to Ms. Romani, there are two or three rebuttal witnesses that will need to take in response to that. We'll and do them all on the same so trip. We're looking at going from four depositions to now, now all of a sudden three plus three more. I, I think the court schedule allows for that. Um, I'm not, we're still a little uncertain whether any of these additional six have anything to do with special appearance. And we might reserve our right to kind of try and figure that out. And his client, CSI, hasn't filed a special appearance, so I don't know why they're taking rebuttal depositions on a uh, jurisdictional deposition that we're taking, but uh, I, I guess there's an answer to that. Well, I mean, Your Honor, our, our client, of course, believes that, that these this discovery is unnecessary for the court to, to answer the special appearance. But if the problem is I don't know. That, exactly. And we don't know either what they're going to say. So we're not asking the court to quash, but it's very it's very possible that once we've taken the deposition, we'll want to take rebuttal discovery. Just, just don't know. But in any event, Your Honor, I, I, mean, I, understand, I understand that there's a lot of lawyers on this side, and Council can't be expected to satisfy all of the lawyers' calendars. I, I appreciate that. At the same time, the fact that there's a lot of lawyers on the other side does not excuse civility. It does not excuse at least a, an attempt to say, this is what I'm planning to do, let me know if you have a problem. And, and here when we get sent with these depositions out of, out of state and we have to do something, uh, we have to confer about it, we have to decide what we're gonna do, and, and it's, it, he ought to know that it's unlikely that we, unless we have a conference, we're going to have these deficits are actually going to go forward. It's a complete waste of time, and it's 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 unbecoming of a, of, of a, a member of the bar, frankly. Your Honor, it's also so, unbecoming to work out a deal with me, and then and have one of the defendants say yes, we can produce Tommy Davis, and then the other defendant says no, the defendants can't produce Tommy Davis. So this is just mudslinging, and I think it is inappropriate. Well, and you know what, it is as best possible by conferring, but even just getting everybody on a conference call or jumping from one to another and waiting to hear back from lawyer number 18 say that facetious. It in and of itself is going to be difficult. So uh, under the schedule that was set that was pretty short views, uh, I can understand why. But with the schedule that we're potentially are going to expand at this point, there shouldn't be any reason not to concur. And I don't know if you want particular deadline for direct type deposition versus rebuttal? I don't think, I really, I think we can work it out as long as we confer. I mean, we've got, once we've talked, it's, I, we, we've generally at least been able to narrow it. I don't want to micromanage. So. For, um, <coughs> for the record, record purposes is that my understanding of where we are at the moment is the court is moving the October 18th special appearance hearing to one of the four days you mentioned allowing the council to uh, agree on which one of those four depositions this Thursday and Friday that had been agreed to will be postponed the Leo Amenity deposition as noticed and the Riverside County Sheriff's deposition notices are quashed and that you are not quashing the subpoena with regard to Mr. Davis. It's 
expecting council to work something out on how that would be received. Is that a fair recap? Yes. Well, I, I don't need there know that there's a need for the court to quash. We we'll just withdraw those notices, with the exception of Tommy Davis, in order to secure his attendance at a later deposition. With that representation, that's fine. I just want to don't want to walk out of here and all of a sudden things are back on again. So that's fine. Well, that's fine. Anything else? I think that's it. We're fine with the dates for the hearing. Uh, that they'll just choose one, and I'd like that selected before we leave today, if possible. So we have some certainty. But can we do that? I'll, I'll be here. Got the jury back here, so if you're not able to agree, let me know. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah. 